Thor, yeah. could you give us a little background about you and say sure. cheating or security so people know that you this isn't your first miracle round no. in this topic? No. So I've been in the security industry for 20 years. I'm a hacker. Um, my job at Blizzard Entertainment was lead of application security, which is all of Blizzard's websites globally. And then I was a senior red team specialist. I have banned over 2 million players throughout my career. I have three black badges from DEF CON, and my last job was hacking power plants for the federal government. This is not my first rodeo. This is in entirely my wheelhouse, right? 100%. Yeah. I've, I've done this for 20 years. I, I know a lot of shit about this. Yes. So if you were to ask Thor about security, he probably has at least, you have some conception of what going what is going on here. Just a bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. All right. Let's see what this guy's claim is, because I'm really interested in this now. I'm getting hacked. I'm getting hacked. Okay. Oh, no, I, I do think it'd be really good to set a little bit of the stage really quickly, which is uh, which is that apparently what happened, uh, this all spawned from a live competition where someone has claimed they are getting hacked live, and then it's exploded since then. People are claiming anti-cheat is the problem. Some people are saying the source engine is the problem. Yeah. Everyone's saying a bunch of different stuff, so it sounds very convoluted, and I don't think we technically have all the details quite yet. No, that's exactly what I've been telling people. So let's just watch the video first. Let's go. Yep, I'll watch him, and we'll, we'll meet yeah, I'm up doing the same end. thing. I'm getting hacked. I'm getting hacked. Bro. I know, I know. It's cool. Can you play the game? Bro, I, I'm getting hacked. I know, but can you play? Can you play it? Yeah, but it, I'm, it's cheating. The fuck? I know, I know. It's cool. I know, I know. Wait, what? But like, what? No, but is but, it fucking up your game? Yes, I can see everyone. Like, I'm... You need to leave. You need to leave. You need to leave. I, I, I need to leave the game, right? Yeah, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. It's like, what the f Admin's now. Nick, admin's now. Nick, admin's but, now. Admin's I, I left. Now. I left. Like, admin's now. Restart your game, rejoin. Oh, no, you left the map. Did you close your game? Leave the map. I left. Jen, I had to leave. Did you leave the map? I have to. Yes, I have to. Yes. I have to. I have to leave. I left. Like, bro. I'm getting hacked. I'm getting hacked. Bro. I know. I know. It's cool. Can you play the game? Bro. I'm getting hacked. Yeah, but I'm. So here's I mean, the my, problem my, with this video. Do you see how this starts right here? Where he, it's, it uh, starts in with all of the people being shown? All the yeah. locations? What's the context before this? Where's the video that shows just what happened before this? Because So that's what I was going to gonna ask. Yeah. To me, this looks like somebody who has cheat programs on his computer that accidentally turned them on, which we've seen a billion times before. And the community has extrapolated this out as there's an RCE, an Easy Annie Cheater Apex. This is the source material for that? Really? I, that My first thought was, bro just actually enabled it, realized he enabled it, and better quit really quickly before anybody gets in trouble. That's... That's weird shit, dude. So here's something that's uh, interesting. There's only one piece of this that actually equates to this. It says... Apex Hacking Global Series by oh, Destroyer 2009 yeah. and Random. So this is the only part that says that that could be true. But this looks on its face like this dude activated cheats. This is yeah. the only thing that saves him, I think. The chat right there on the left side is the only thing that saves him. Legitimately. And I bet you if, if, if the chat is real, other people probably was were able to see the chat, and thus it would show up on other chats. And so this would be, you know, well, typically when you're maybe. hacking, you don't want to just so, spam in the chat that you're currently hacking. No, you do all the time. Like, he wouldn't spam it. I don't think anyone else in the chat is able to see this. Unless it's his account saying it. Because, is he DZ? Yeah, he is. Okay, yeah, so it is, it is his so account it. saying it. Yeah, so it's, it's somebody it's somebody sending this as him. Yeah. Which is interesting. So a normal cheat tool would not do that. Normal cheat tool would not do that. So yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. it looks like there's a good claim there. Now, the, the thing that's really interesting about this is someone was claiming that this is remote code execution, right? We've also got another clip, it looks like, by the way. If you haven't seen Ooh, this yeah. other one, you want to? Can someone yeah. throw it in my chat? We have the same exact player. I'm going to go grab this and send this to you as well. I'm actually going to throw it over Discord for you, bud. Oh, Discord kind of sucks. Hold on, just because then I have to like black out my screen and stuff. Someone says they're sending it to me beforehand. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah, it's the so, one with the, he's on a bow. He's he's yeah. using the bow. So let's okay, take a look at this. Watch what, what happens a couple pick. seconds in. I'm same player. There. Yep. Oh. Oh. Huh. Wait. Wait, what the f what the I'm fuck? Getting Don't worry about it. I'm getting hacked, I'm getting hacked. So that's what happened right before. It pops up. Okay. Wait, wait. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna get the pop up on. Yep. TSM halal hook. Yep. There's a couple of things that I'm wondering here. N having seen this, right? 
it's very clear that he didn't intend for this to happen. You can see that by the chat, right? The chat is saying, hey, Epic's hack hacking global series by Destroy 2009 and random, right? So it's people saying, uh -huh. hey, this is me. The credit goes to me for doing this. Happens all the time. So the hacking community. However, yeah. the really interesting part of this is that it pops up an actual hack on his computer and then goes from there. This doesn't mean that he, there's RCE in Easy Any Cheat. This doesn't mean that there's RCE in Apex. It means this guy's computer is compromised at the very minimum. People have jumped to the maximum possible vulnerability here when they've basically, they've forgotten about Occam's Razor. This guy's computer might just be compromised. Nothing else needs to be involved with that. Whether he's been downloading cheats or not is kind of irrelevant here. It's clear that someone is doing this to his machine as you can see on the left side it's very clear that that's happening my my initial so, bet way, would be that more, he's compromised not the game there's one more thing that you may be missing is that it's sure. happened to two other players as well so if it did happen to two other players show me those because i haven't seen those yet that does yeah, change things entirely players. yes <laughs> let's be real it's probably him it does i mean anytime a pop-up shows up on your computer it does feel very sus yeah, so Granted, if this is happening you know. to multiple players at the same time, then it does change that entirely. If it's just one dude, then I, then it's going to be his com machine that's compromised. So let's see this. Let's see the other one. And it is Imperial Hal. I, I, I highly doubt that he's cheating. Can we shoot height? Yeah, yeah, shoot. No. Yeah, I'm watching this I'm, one. I'm cheating, I'm cheating, I'm cheating. I'm, I'm fucking shit. I got aimbot. I have aimbot. Oh, no. Shoot height? Yeah, yeah, shoot now. I'm, I'm cheating, I'm cheating, I'm cheating. I'm, I'm fucking shit. I got aimbot. I have aimbot. Oh, no. Uh, you gotta leave the game. You gotta leave the game, bro. You gotta out, leave bro. The so this is happening to two players at the same time. But here's something that's really interesting. Look in the chat. This guy doesn't have the he chat doesn't. on. I'm, 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 yeah, he does not have the chat thing. So one player gets chat where it's clear that his machine is compromised. In some way. Right? The other guy doesn't get that chat but has aimbot turned on. Yeah, yeah, shoot now. Imperial Hal, by the way, like if you don't know, Imperial Hal is like he's been top, what top ten, uh, Apex player since like the very beginning. Sure. Probably high, highly doubt that he's he's cheating. You know, like he, his aim is not that much different than what the aim bot just did for him. So he's pretty good. So he's top yeah. two right now. So he's he's very very good at the game. So it's it's unusual for him to be using that. <laughs> yeah, it would be super unusual for that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they're very so in order, in order to pull this off, what the attacker would need to have is the ability to download and run a cheat in runtime to that person's client. So they would need remote code execution to get all of that onto their machine and then run it, which does lend the possibility towards a remote code execution in Apex. That does. It gives the possibility for that. Doesn't mean it is, but it does. It could also be that these machines are compromised because it didn't hit everyone in the game. It just hit two people. Yeah. That is a clever thing to do if you're trying to create, you know, the fog of war with that. But when you have an exploit this big, it's much more funny to make everyone suddenly cheating because that's hilarious. If you're going to go for it, you go for it all, right? Generally. So I am wondering... I think at that point, it, it's, it's again, it's the same thing. We have to wait to see where the Vuln exists. Is this an easy anti-cheat, which seems unlikely to me? Is this in Apex, which is possible? Or is this individuals compromised computers? Because you could have two people on a gigantic tournament like this that have compromised computers. As a good example of this, we just ran a game jam, right? We had 1,400 yep. submissions. 30 of those submissions were malware. Of those 30 submissions, two of them were people that did not package malware into it. Their machines were compromised, and the games that they actually compiled had that malware in it, and they had no idea. And we helped them get the malware off their machine that stopped their, their game from being malware. This shit happens all the time. So there's still the likelihood that you have two individually compromised machines here. That is still absolutely possible. And I'm... I think it's it's foolish to jump to conclusions on this stuff, and I'm seeing a lot of people on the internet doing that. This requires investigation and actual information. 100%. So another another interesting part is that Hal and, uh, again, Burton usually have the two most highest viewers. Mm -hmm. And so to be the target of some sort of remote cheat to, say, be able to get your name out there for the cheats, Definitely. they would be the most s s likely targets. Yeah. If this was some sort of, I mean, I'm not saying that it is remote uh, code execution or anything like that. But if, you know, if you were to target somebody, you would want to choose the people with the most views.
Yeah, no, most definitely. If if you want it, if you want it to get viral, right? Which if you're posting your own name in chat, absolutely. You know, if you're posting your handles, one hundred percent. You you'd hit the people that are actually going to be the highest viewership, one hundred percent. It still doesn't prove or disprove if this is an RCE and Apex or if it is an individually compromised machine. Either is likely, unfortunately. And it's it's something that I I think we again we just need more information. Are there any other videos for other players? Or is it only these two? Yeah. Um, all right. So there's some other ones people are kind of getting, which feel a little bit more deep in the conspiracy well, which is like these two also got gifted Apex packs recently. Uh, things like that. I'm not sure if, you know, I'm sure there's maybe more gifting. It's just, it just happened to be happenstance. But uh, there's this big Reddit, Reddit article. I don't know if you've seen this, but it's on clearing misconceptions. I'm more curious some of your thoughts on this one as well. I just sent it in the, in the chat. So here's, here's actually a really interesting video. All right, hold on. Let's listen to this. Oh, man. I sure wonder how Imperial House PC got compromised. Okay, I was down. What is this? All right, hold on, hold on. I, I'm Free looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to play it right now on my stream. One sec. Okay, I was yep. down. What is this? Free download. Okay, I'm downloading it. All right, I'm going to play it now for me. You're going to be so upset. <laughs> so, dude, I'm telling you right now. I'm to download this. What is I know. this? So, like, Free download. All right. <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. The longer this conversation goes on, the more that I believe that it is likely that we have individually compromised machines. Like yeah. that may not end up being the case, but it is now more of a possibility than when we started this conversation. You know, like that's <sighs> because you have you have risky behavior with downloads. You have two people being targeted that have the top, you know, the top viewership and the panic yeah. that is caused out of this is is, oh, Apex has RCE. Oh, easy anti cheat has RCE when there's no evidence of that yet. If there does, if there is evidence that comes out for that, great. That's part of the investigation, right? Yeah, funny game that a little bit. This is this isn't part of the investigation phase. What is going on? We have we have evidence of what goes on. How does that happen? What is the the way that that occurs? Easy Annie Cheat actually put out a statement saying that the there is no RCE on their end. By the way, if you haven't yeah, seen yeah, yeah. Let's see. Hold on. Let me let me get let me. I just had it right. I'm sorry. I have so many of them. Yeah, they there said, you go. Easy we, Anti said we've yeah. investigated the recent reports of potential RCE issues within Easy Anti Cheat. At this time, we are confident that there is no RCE vulnerability within EAC being exploited. We'll continue to work closely with our partners for any follow up support needed. Yep. And I responded to that and I said, being confident is different from fully understanding the recently claimed RCE vulnerability. With EAC's claim here, I'm still waiting to see if the vuln lies with Apex or EAC. Better to be correct over being fast. Don't spread needless fear and wait for more information. Because like, that's that's what it comes down to. Any company can claim anything they want. Every company claims yeah. that they haven't been compromised. But let me tell you, working in this field, everybody gets compromised all of the time. And it's ridiculous to have that be a claim, right? So it's it's wait for information. Let's see what happens. They have to cover their ass 100%. And I'd like to see what the actual mechanism for this was. Right now, there could be RCE. Based on Occam's razor and seeing this many times, I think it is more likely of individually compromised accounts, compromised machines, especially when you have a person just downloading anything, unless that was a meme video. It doesn't really paint the situation positively for him, right? You know, like, yeah, that's that's kind of a thing with that is it's just it is more likely to be an individually compromised machine. It is less I likely to be RC in the game, but maybe it is. It could be RC in the game. We just have to wait. And what I've told people is the same thing I'm going to say now. If you are worried about this, wait 24 to 48 hours. Don't play Apex for 24 to 48 hours. Wait to see what happens. And if it turns out to be RC in the game, then you dodged a bullet. If it doesn't, who gives a shit? You just didn't play a game for two days. Doesn't matter. Not a big deal. Yeah. So clearing up the, the from the article, clearing up misconceptions about the uh, ALGS hack, uh, one of them says that, am I in danger if I play Apex? Maybe. I personally have uninstalled Apex to be safe right now. And I think you should do the same if you are on a PC. Yep. How do you feel about that type of advice? Is that a good level set of advice? I think that's pretty fine right now. Like being off of a game for two days is not a big deal. 
Like, that's that's totally fine. That being said, the people who were targeted here are very high-profile people. If it was absolutely RCE inside of Apex Legends, which is unlikely to me right now, it would be more likely that they'd hit the entire player base at once. You can hit a couple of high-profile streamers in a high-profile game, but if you have something that distributable, you're going to hit everybody. There'd be no reason not to. Yeah. You do it with Bitcoin miners, you do it with all kinds of shit, man. Like, there's no reason to just waste such a vuln, such a massive widespread vuln in such a yeah. massive game on this. It's such yeah, a small Yeah, I was about win. to say, the, the, what, you always have to ask, what is the telos, right? What is the purpose of the thing that we just got done watching? To yep. me, it seems like the purpose was to be able to get out a name and to say something. Therefore, how they got it done is likely not this, because if you had root level access to every last person's computer that has Apex on it, the last thing you'd want to be doing is to show that you have this, right? You'd yeah. want to be able to actually use that in some way to your advantage. Like you said, Bitcoin miners, whatever you're doing, you're doing something, right? And yeah. so this idea that they went out there and they took the most viewed like thing that could possibly happen in Apex, some sort of tournament, some sort of you know, fighting thing, took the most viewed people and then hit them with a hack in which could benefit them greatly, it doesn't make much sense, Yeah. right? So, uh, so at least I can't see the reasoning behind it other than you get to say you did it. So here's the but thing. Then you XBM, to everybody, right? Wait, XBM TTV said, this guy was hacking public lobbies too. If you're going to make a claim, post a link. Because yeah. that, that is meaningless to me. The text alone means nothing. Show me the evidence of this. What is this YouTube video? Let's see. This is not a public lobby. That's TSM again. By the way, someone is wondering if you if you're one if if you've considered if this is Blizzard and they're trying to sabotage their opponents. This is just <laughs> no, god damn it, that's funny. No, this is this is just another cheater in the video game. That's not the same thing at all. No, that's Yeah, hold on. It is a public lobby? So you're saying that these guys are getting into the same game as a TSM player and doing this. Let's take a look at this. Yeah. Let's see if there's Play any credence to play. Holy fucking shit. Looks like this one's just like, I interviewed a cheat developer. Oh my fuck. What the fuck? There's so much more. What the fuck? How you dead. There we go. Destroyer 2009 fan. In a public lobby game? Interesting. How do you even... I'm watching a video no, where it's like, up. I interviewed Cheat Developer Destroyer 2009. Like, how do you even know that... The, it... No, do you see this right here on my screen? Destroyer 2009 uh, fan, Destroyer 2009 fan, Destroyer 2009 fan. So he's summoning tons of versions of himself into the game? Let's wait and see this again. Oh yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking at your screen right now. Look at this. Squad landed nearby. Look at that. They're all players, and they're all that guy. It looks like they're bots. It does look like they're bots. All I know is that actually looks like a lot of fun, and Apex should really consider a zombie mode. Do you agree? Because this, this actually, this, this looks like great zombie play right here. So what it looks like is it looks like he's able to spawn in st stuff in the game. So that that is not end game. That is not that dude's computer being compromised. If he's yeah. able to summon in units like this and run bots on the server, this is that, a whole different level of of compromise right that's here. That's different. Yeah. So this isn't a compromise of the user's machine. This removes the idea of it being a end user's machine being compromised. I'd be more at least well this one. This one could be a completely yeah. different thing too. This could be a completely different one that people are trying to claim is the same. No, if you look at the top problems. right, look at it. Destroy two thousand nine fan, same people. Could be a different exploit, but this is not a good thing. Same guy, right? Exact yeah. exactly same guy. So I'm really interested in this now because you've got a couple of possibilities. For their machines having the cheat tools turned on. You've got end-user compromised machine, right? That could be through yeah. a download, so it could be a Trojan on their machine that's actually giving that kind of an access, or it could be RCE through the game. For this kind of a vulnerability, 
that means they'd have to be using an exploit to summon all those units in game, which means the server has to be saying yes to the commands that are being stated, which means they have some kind of server level access or have found a vulnerability in the way that the client sends commands that the server is accepting them. That is really bad. This one, yeah. I find to be much scarier than the first one. I find this to be way scarier than the first one. That's bad. Yeah, because you can see, yeah, because they, because not only are there things showing up on other people's machine, but he's shooting them and downing them, which means they're like literally the game is like these are legitimate players in yeah. the game, and it they somehow are running players. some level of code that they're running because obviously you couldn't have. I mean, I assume you couldn't have that many people ready to be orchestrated to just chase after somebody. This no. has to be some sort of code of some sort that's running. It looks like, which is actually kind of wild. And not only that, they're doing it in a way where if you look at this. They're all dropping at the same time, which means they're doing it in real time while stream sniping this guy playing. That's uh, wild first shit. off, very impressive. Very super impressive. impressive. Yeah, look at this. It's super cool. I actually, I mean, dude, I'm telling you, this zombie idea is just really worth it. And you can tell it's not actually players running these; they're just bots. So the guy's summoning yeah. in bots. He's finding he's found a way to do this. This is way weirder. And they're all named the exact same thing. That's the other thing, too. Each of the it, So here's here's a question for you guys. Can you name yourself the same thing as another player in Apex? Does it restrict you from doing that? Because I don't play Apex. Apex. No, you can't. No, you cannot. Some people are saying yes, I'm you can. Some positive. people are saying no, you can't. I'm quite positive you cannot because I, I, can't, I can't get my the Primogen uh, account. I have it on my Xbox, but I cannot get it on EA. So I don't think you can. Okay. You can we, on Steam. You can we, on Steam. You can have the same name on Steam? Yeah, they recently did update it through Steam. Okay, you, get this, you can have the Steam display name. Okay, because if you look at each next to these, they do have a, a unique identifier. So he's number 30, number 8, number 5, number 19. So they're all using the same name. Yeah. Wow. I'm actually just completely baffled at the fact that they were able to get this thing to run on the server. I'm, I'm interested in the mechanism for it. Like 100%. I'm super interested in the mechanism. Because would this suggest that you have the ability to execute... Well, okay, that guy's floating in the air. What, does that mean you have the ability to execute code on the server? Because I assume that the, a client... They would never allow a client to say spawn in a robot. A lot that, of games like, screw that up, dude. A lot of games do. Like, look at New World, okay. right? New World okay. had a huge amount of problems with client-side authoritative actions. This is not new in the world of gaming. So there is a potential for this being a client that is telling the server to do something, the server's doing something dumb that it shouldn't be doing. That happens all the time in games, all the time. And once okay. they're found, they get patched. But yeah, these mistakes do happen for sure. The interesting thing to me is if he's got access to the server in any way and he's getting the server to run stuff, where does that end, right? Because if you have some kind of a vulnerability that runs specific commands, then what commands can it run? Is it restricted in some way? Can it do something worse than that? I don't know. There's yeah. again, it's more investigation of this. This is some wild shit, frankly. Really, yeah. really wild shit. And I, I think the outcome of this is regardless of what the vulnerability ends up being, Apex has taken a huge hit in terms of PR right now. Massive. People are gonna Do be afraid so? to play it. Yeah, people are afraid to play the game right now. There's I've had like we, we've got what, fifteen thousand people on the stream right now. I have had so many people come into chat today, ask me, should I uninstall Apex today? Interesting. So many thousands of people today, dude. Not a Thousands single person has asked me that other than I yeah. should give my hot take on this. We yeah. have very different streams. Well, it's because I'm, I'm my my primary is security, right? So people are gonna come ask me about this. Yeah. Security specifically in the games industry. So like my primary is skill issues. So I, I uh, think I true. see why this is, hasn't mm. happened yet. That is true. Yeah. The skill issue is gonna stop them from asking, I think. Also, thank you for those ten subs. Very nice of you. But yeah, to be real with you, dude, like there's a, a number of different vulner like a number of different exploits that are happening here. I could see how people could assume this is RCE, but we don't know. Yeah. This could be access to the server. This could be a client sending commands that the server accepts where they have limited functionality. This could be that they are they have two compromised player machines. There's a lot of different options here. So you have a public lobby where they're still targeting this one guy. They're summoning in bots on that. That doesn't prove RCE. You have two different players' machines being compromised and cheat tools being put on their machine. You have a video of them downloading shit that they shouldn't be downloading and just running it. That could just be their individual machines being compromised. There's no solid proof that this is RCE and easy any cheat or an Apex. So jumping to that conclusion makes no sense. What's RCE? Remote code execution. 
So yeah, the general internet's going to jump on this and say like, oh, it's remote code execution. Bah, the sky is falling. That makes no goddamn sense. It never will. You, you yeah. have to look at any vulnerability as a researcher. Be like, okay, this is what's happening, but how? And once we find out the how, then we can claim if it's remote code execution or not. If we don't have the how, then don't spread misinformation. Doesn't make any damn sense. So here's a couple things that I think are really uh, interesting. So I don't know how familiar you, you are with uh, Apex, but this is a ranked game. So you can tell that it's a ranked game, I believe, by having yeah. that signal up in the top. I, I believe this is considered a ranked game. So therefore, how did the hacker get access specifically to uh, Hal's game? Like To me, that's actually the more interesting thing, yep. which is that they are able to not only either A, they are ranked near similar as Hal, which I somehow doubt because I think it would be really hard to be a successful hacker and to be a successful this high level predator, right? Those are two very difficult, time consuming tasks to do. Therefore, how is he getting that information, which is yep. leading that there has to be a much larger breach than we probably know on the server side than on the on some sort of remote code execution in simplicity. Yeah, again, so that that could be something that's happening on server side where they have access to the server in some way and the server infrastructure, totally possible. Uh, could be an insider threat, could be somebody that's given access or an insider machine that has been compromised that gains access to those types of things. Shit happens all the time, right? It could also be the fact that the client may be able to change what lobby it's in by editing the packets that are being sent to the server and the server just accepts it. That is also a possibility. There's a lot of different routes for getting to this point. And that's why the specifics on what does cause this are the most important. Because we, we could sit there and wax infinitely about the potentials yeah. that could cause this. And unfortunately, those potentials are worthless till we know. I'm interested in it mostly from like kind of a research perspective. And I think the best take that I can give is just wait. Just wait. I, I do find it surprising that this level of vulnerability is happening so quickly. And it for me, there's so many different combos here. Like for me, the most likelihood of some of this is an end user compromised machine. They get into the streamer's machine. Another likelihood here is they have access to the server or the ability to send commands to the server in some way to get the server to do something clearly, right? So those two things yeah. seem likely. Still not seeing RCE here, you know? Interesting. Well, either way, uh, I mean, I'm not going to be playing Apex anytime soon. I do like Apex. I love, I love yeah. the idea of Apex. I just realized that I like have too many enti entirely too many skill issues to enjoy the game sure. thoroughly. But uh, it's it's just wild that this is happening because, yep. I mean, it has it's 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 minimally server oriented in some sense. So yeah, very impressive work. Very yeah. impressive work. Some people are saying like, you know, hacker stated it's RC. Cool. Who gives a shit? I don't care what the hacker states. Remote code execution is a very specific kind of vulnerability, legitimately, and. When you are making claims like that, you have to prove the claim. So to be completely honest with you, anyone can claim whatever the hell they want on the internet. If you're taking that as truth without having proof of it, then you haven't been paying attention. Ever. The, the whole point of this is that you need the method. You need to prove the method. And if you don't yeah. prove the method, taking a claim at face value, you're just spreading misinformation. We have to know how this is happening, not just what someone claims. Ever. Yeah, Ever and again, all. listening to... Even, I mean, I wouldn't listen to the hacker with no proof, right? If they're just I saying I wouldn't listen this, to anyone with no proof. It's it, trust it's but like, verify, you know? Yeah. I mean, because remember, you don't know the purpose behind this hack, uh, hack other than clout. That's that's like your minimum you can guess is that they yeah. wanted their name to be known. We're all talking. We're all saying his name. So minimally, there's something to that, right? And so since we don't know the purpose, you can't really trust that the, the sources are uh, RCE. You, yep. you just have no idea. Yeah, no, 100%. I think, I think the biggest part about this for me is is the internet has a very critical lack of trust but verify going on. Trust that the people are telling the truth, but verify the claim. And none of us can verify the claim right now. Because we can't verify it, don't repeat it. Don't go around telling everyone that this is RCE. We don't know. We know a claim that's been yeah. made. Prove it. Prove it. Yeah. That's the important It is part. very surprising. It does seem like this is a, you know, I understand with somebody that Wait, doesn't somebody's understand. Wait, somebody saying Mandy in chat? Man? Man? Yeah, yeah. I keep seeing, I keep seeing it over and over again. Talk to yeah. this uh, Apex Pro player. If anyone wants to get Apex hey, Pro Pro player in on the call, I'm, I'm fine with that. Hey, what's up, dude? Join the call. Oh hi. I, I know. Oh, there he is. I've seen Pirate Software a few times. Seen the yeah. stream. Oh, hello. So if you don't, 
if you don't know my background for stuff, I've been in uh, offensive security in the gaming industry for about 20 years. So before this, I was the lead of application security for Blizzard Entertainment, which is all of okay. Blizzard's websites globally. I was a senior red team specialist for them. And I have three black badges from DEF CON. And my last job was hacking power plants for the federal government. Uh, in, my Jesus, time throughout, yeah, in my time throughout the industry, I've banned over 2 million players for cheating in games. So like this is 100% my wheelhouse. And we've been talking about okay. the potentials for what could be going on here. And I'm still not seeing any evidence of remote code ex execution just yet let me let, no. let me give you a quick let me give you a quick intro sure. as well hey my name yeah. is prime jen been programming for a long time i've created such a security flaw that it got it, its own name on twitch or on on netflix as the most egregious bug that has ever existed on the surface ever uh in fact a simple while loop could have taken down all of netflix and you could not have gone back so, so that's my security thing is i nice. have created the most egregious bug ever Known as the okay. repulsive grizzly attack. Proud of you. Thank you. That's you good. It so you said you talked to the hacker. How did they verify who they were? Uh, basically, he. I think he's a viewer of mine or a viewer of the Apex community. He first of all, he gifted me four thousand hacks in game, okay. and he gifted uh, multiple thousands of hacks to other people uh, without like wow. taking any money. Uh, that's like a four thousand dollars approximately. Um, and also he has this uh, bot or like multi-boxing bot that makes like 40 people land on top of you and kill you. Like punch I saw you that. Out. I watched that video. And he was, uh, yeah, my bad. What are you about to say? No, I said I watched that video where they were summoning all the bots. We were actually just reviewing this. Yeah. The the original videos that went off that showed those, those two players using cheat tools did not, does not prove RCE. A lot of people are claiming it's remote code execution. What it does prove is that their machines are compromised. Whether it's compromised yeah. through remote code execution or it's compromised because they download something, something stupid is unknown. So we, we can't jump to conclusions. Of that. This one, though, where he summons in all the bots and sending you all the packs like that makes me believe that he has some kind of access to the server in a way where he's able to get all of these items and gift them to you, being able to manipulate the server to summon all the bots. That's a much more scary vuln than what he was doing to those two players during that game. Yeah, that's what he can do. I spoke with him. Uh, I actually have a YouTube video uh, where I speak with him if you want me to find it. I can send is, it to oh, you. is that one real? I, I couldn't tell. It was, uh, yeah, Mandy, you have the I interviewed a cheat developer, Destroyer 2009. Yes. So that was legitimately, so this was like That's during him. the pack giving and all that. So you actually knew this was the that guy. Was, cause... That was actually the first time. I have a second one too. I actually yeah. don't know. I have a second one where like they like land on me and he's like on my team and I'm talking to him. Okay. Yeah. Because it's if always got really it, hard link to it, verify. Link it so I can send it in my chat too. Yeah. I can probably, I can yeah. probably find it. Yeah. I, ha I have it right now. I'm like, I I'm tossing it. Yeah, I have, a, I have a different one that's more new. That was like oh, the yeah. first time I spoke with him, that guy. I have a different one that was more new. Yeah, if you want to send that one, that'd be even better. Here's yeah, the old one. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, Destroyer 2009. All right, I've got it. I'm going to link this over. Yeah, yeah that's, the, that's the older one that I grabbed. And I put it in our Discord chat. There you go. The newer one. Oh, nice. We yeah, uh, he get, also has the newer one. Where, well, I'll uh, get a new one. Nice. I think uh, my chat already got it. Sweet. No way, guys. Uh, that was uh, Yo, that was uh, uh, that There's was no like the uh, that one you this have right now. You're uh, watching is uh, the old one. This is the old yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, I just got the. Yeah. Oh, is but this yeah. one. Was so this from came a out a month ago. ago. So this guy's been doing this for a while then. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. He um. He's been landing on people. He's been just like normal cheating. You know, like the the classic aimbot wall hack type thing. Yeah. And, exactly. um, but he's also been like, he definitely knows some server side stuff and I was speaking to him. It'd have to be. Yeah, he'd have to be at that point. If he's been doing this for long enough, the, the things that I'm worried about, these are the potentials out of this, right? I'm still not seeing evidence of remote code execution, but I am seeing evidence of a compromised server. I'm seeing evidence of maybe a compromised employee or like a, an employee's machine could be compromised. It gives him extra access to this. That'd be something I'm worried about. Or a client that's able to send information to the server that the server then accepts that it shouldn't be, which all three of those possibilities are highly likely based on what he's able to do here. With remote code yeah. execution, that means that you're getting execution of arbitrary code on the end target. So if he has RCE to the server, that would make sense. That doesn't mean he has RCE to each individual player's client. That's a very different thing, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so what's what, what yeah. is the point? Has he like tried to like sell a cheat? Is it is there any like reasons that you're seeing beyond or that he's talked it, about beyond just the point of him being able to do it and give you guys a bunch of packs or No, but it, it seems like he's just 
Uh, the thing is, it seems like it's for attention because he could literally ruin the guy that Jen, Jen Burton. Uh, he's called the first guy. He did it on. He could literally ruin someone's career because of yeah. he didn't write his name in chat, so everybody knew who it was. He mm-hmm. would have ruined his career right there, right? But he's oh, obviously yeah. just doing it for attention. Also, um, he's been doing it to the bigger streamers. Uh, he's been doing it to me, Hal, Jen Burton. I'm not sure if someone else got gifted subs. Uh, like gifted, not the subs, my bad. Gifted packs. But he he told me, I just sent you the new link, by the way, also. He told me uh, when I spoke to him that that you can uh, you, you can see in the link now that like there's like 40 people landing on me. Um, and yeah. he told me that, you know, uh, that he's just doing it for fun. Because why not? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a pretty is, common, you know. that's a huge common driver. So, like, I've, I've been part of the hacking community for a super long time, right? Like, those black badges that I was talking about, that's from DEF CON, the hacking convention that happens in Vegas every year. There's about 30,000 of us show up and we, we, you know, compete with each other and have fun. Inside of that community, there's not always a monetary driver. Some of the times it's just because, hey, I want to do something that no one else can do. I want to beat the puzzle, right? And the puzzle may just be, I want to see if I can turn this company's game inside out. Totally, totally a normal thing. So that drive yeah. is not as uncommon as, as anyone would think. That's a very common drive. Yeah, the, the old meme of for the lulls, right? It's it's an old yeah. it's an old meme for that. With this, I'm mostly interested not in what drives the attacker, because I understand that, that kind of that side of the house is super complete. The thing that interests me is what level of access does he actually have? Because if it's a client that's sending things up to the server and the server is vulnerable, right? And he's sending things up that cause remote code execution, there's a couple of different ways to do that. So you could be sending a packet that's malformed and there's a certain level of buffer that is on the end of that packet, like a certain amount of text that goes outside of those bounds. And we call this a buffer overflow. That buffer overflow could then maybe potentially execute code, right? And with those, you may have a character limit. So he might be restricted in how much he can put there. But if there is no character limit, he could write a whole shitload of code to the server. And things like what you're talking about, he could do being able to summon in bots. he just write a script for it once he figures it out through a lot of testing, a lot of research, finds a way to do it on a very small scale, finds a way to scale it up, and then really, and then goes and launches that, right? The thing with those two individual players, though, that still looks like a compromised end, end user account. So I don't think, based on what we have, I don't think that the attacker has individual access to Apex players' machines, if that makes sense. Yeah. I do think he has access to the server. In one, in some capacity, whatever that capacity is, but to be able to get individual RCE access onto an end user's machine, that means the end user's machine has to have that vulnerability. That means the client has to be vulnerable, not just the server. So he'd have to ping pong from a vulnerable server and then down to each vulnerable client, which is a much wilder vulnerability. Like chaining like that is not yeah. easy shit, and it means that the vuln has to exist there in the first place. So for me, Occam's Razor, I think he's compromised those two individual users' machines and done that to them remotely because their machines were compromised. And I think he's accessing the server in a way because the server is vulnerable in some way. Based on current information, that could change. Yeah, he told me he can access all accounts he wants to, though. He told me he can go on my account, he can open packs. He told me he can buy stuff from my account. So, So here's the thing, though. All of those things that you're talking about, where you could go into my account and buy packs and do that, that's all server side. None of that is yeah, being done on your no. client. So if you're going into someone's account and doing something like that, and again, he didn't do it. He claimed it. He claimed he could, which doesn't mean it's real. You, you have to prove that kind of stuff, right? Trust, but ver- no. verify. Trust that he's telling no, the truth, but verify the claim. So in this case, let's say he could do that. All those actions are server-side actions. So if he had access to the server, he absolutely could. But he doesn't have access to your machine. So if he can change... You know, if he can issue payments, if he can do things like changing your inventory, if he could delete your account, if he can do all that kind of stuff, that is server side access. If he can place a script or a program on your computer and then execute that, that is client access. And that's way more dangerous, like way worse, if that makes sense. I'm also curious yeah. if, it, if it really is like malformed packets and being able to send things up to the server, uh, what kind of other control can he have within that? Can he actually just terminate games? Right? Because certain kind of packets can cause, uh, you know, hot CPUs, cause all sorts of problems. Can you just start causing lag? Can you actually just wreak havoc in like a really destructive way? Because that would honestly be the worst thing for Apex 
is not that he can summon 40 people and make it feel like you're in a zombie survival game, but that he, he could actually ruin the general player's experience. And yeah. do they have that type of vulnerability just sitting open, which is really wild. That's a much different level. Dude, uh, 10 to 25% of all people that play Apex cheat in high rank. Well, yeah. That's like, pretty li common. I, I'm, yeah. Whenever, whenever I sit and play, at least like six people per game get banned almost. <laughs> really? That's like 10% of the lobby, yes. I'm not surprised. And, yeah. and the thing is, the problem is, they made, you know, you know companies, they made bad updates, right? Yeah. Sometimes they make good, sometimes they make bad. And they made an update where if you're three stacking, the lowest rank, like rookie four, can queue with number one pred. Like that number one, uh, highest rank. Yeah. Uh, you know? So you've got you've got an issue so, with with uh, ranking balance, and that's not great. Yeah. <laughs> what's the, what's the, what is that called in the professional world, where you you tailgate behind somebody, where you go behind them through security? Yeah, is that pretty much what's happening yeah. right there? No, you it's, have it's, a high rank player that's just letting in the cheaters. <laughs> you're basically just allowing a like a high rank player just trash a low rank player, but also it, it creates a, a more worse like a worse issue where somebody who gets banned can get back up to f messing with the higher ranked players very quickly. You know, that's that's the issue when you have a lobby that works that way where, you know, you're letting the lower ranked players up into the higher ranked players area very quickly. You know, you just you kind of ferment an account for a little bit and then get it back up there to bother people. It's um it's why League of Legends requires you to be maximum level before you can go into rank play. It's to yeah. make that process slower. It doesn't actually mm -hmm. stop them, but it slows them down. Yeah. But this but the thing is what the problem is like how do they how, how you, if, if you watch the clip of course of Jen, you've probably seen it, I guess. Uh if yeah. you see the clip, he, there's a literal client. Yeah. Uh, like in the game opening so it feels you know, much different than the hal one too because the hal one had no client it was it only was straight, auto aim yeah. and he was locked on whereas this one actually was a transparent window it looked like it was actually built with in-game stuff or yes. something like it because it, it kind of melded into the game yeah so we yeah. i've actually got this up here so you can see this right here the tsm halal hook right yeah, so yeah. this this pops up which means this dude's machine is compromised we don't know if that compromise happened through the client or if that happened because he downloaded something stupid, right? At the same time, we have a tweet right here, which is very funny to me. Okay, I was downloading. What is this? Yeah. Hey, download. Okay, I'm downloading it. Wait, uh, let me turn it up uh, so I can listen. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I'm ready. Download. What is this? Oh, this is Free my favorite download. tweet. Okay. Or my favorite video. Prime, wait. Okay, I was downloading. Oh, I'm, I, I can't tell. Oh if my I'm god, Prime, your shut video up. Or my Prime, video. shut up. Okay, I was downloading. What is this? Free download. Okay, I'm downloading it. Okay, I was downloading. What is this? Free yeah, download. but like, okay. uh, that's just him being fucking stupid. Like, give him a life. Come on. Yes, but let's say this. <laughs> let's say this happened a month ago. Let's say this happened a month ago, right? Let's say that he's yeah. he's not screwing around and he actually just downloaded something random on the internet. Anything that you download, anything at all that you put on that machine. That machine could have been compromised for months, man. So that's yeah. why I look at these types of things and I'm like, okay, you know, if this is if this is a joke thing, cool. But if it's not a joke thing and he actually did that, you always think about those types of things. For this, we still don't have any indication that it's RC on the client. I would love to see the met method for this, the mechanism for that. But again, was, we still don't have it. By the way, right? sorry for dropping, but that was after the clip. That one right there is after he got hacked. This one is so he, he's down, yeah he's downloading uh what's oh, called so malware after bytes that. sure yeah so like if he's if he's got that and he's running malware bytes after the fact that's a good idea right but with that kind of a thing he's like oh he's just downloading something that chat told him to do and if he gives he gets a link for it and he goes and runs that this happens to everybody all the time and it also doesn't mean that the the hacker has some kind of a, an exploit on the client still. Like when, when we're dealing with vulnerabilities anytime, especially in the games industry, we have to determine scope of the attacker's ability, right? And if the attacker is claiming something, we need to prove that the attacker can do those types of things. Because everybody is going to be like, I'm way bigger than life. I'm way scarier than possible, right? Like I, I'm the biggest, baddest, most badass hacker around. It's a normal thing. But if they don't prove that they can do that, then it's fog of war. They look way scarier than they actually are. So for me, this isn't scary to me. This is like, puzzle solve time right like what is this dude doing where he's getting access to these individuals computers and occam's razor to me says you've got two compromised normal machines you know because he hasn't gone after anybody else in those games he hasn't compromised anybody else's accounts in this way by actually running those when he could and he hasn't done it yet even in a, a whole bunch of other games that are going on these major streamers have not been compromised again right not that we've seen so if that is happening if he does have that access why didn't he use it again 
The only thing he's doing outside of that is server side actions, such as spawning in packs and handing them to you. And after that, spawning in bots in the game. Server side access is scary enough. That's bad, right? They need to find out what the hell is going on there. But this still, no evidence of RC on the client. Not yet. Maybe he has it, but this doesn't prove it. So, Thor, a common question I see, which is how how do I know or what is a good sign to look for as a layman for RCE, for the remote code execution that could potentially compromise my system, get something installed that I don't want? How would I know, like, what are some signs you'd want to look for? So for me, what I'd want to see is him doing this on a wider scale to other average users en masse, right? Because then you can only prove that at that point, once you have more machines that this is happening to, you can prove like, hey, wait a minute. It is very unlikely now that he is compromise every one of these accounts and every one of these computers individually, right? When you have two high visibility, high, you know, value targets like this, and only those two's machines are, you know, compromised in this way, it doesn't prove RCE. RCE, it, you'd use it in mass, right? If you had a vulnerability yeah. like that where you could hit anybody's account and actually put something on their computer in any lobby in this game, and you just target two specific machines... And that's it. In a private match, in a very highly public eyed setting, it's incredible. Yeah, it, it's incredibly unlikely. So w what we look at in that is like either he hasn't thought about going after more people, which seems wrong to me, or th the scope of his vulnerability is not as large as he makes it out to be. For me, right? I I, I personally think he just does it for attention, though. Sure. Yeah. If you wanted like, to do it for attention, you'd hit every like to be real with you. If you wanted to do it for attention, you'd hit everybody in every game, not just two major streamers. You'd hit everybody. Everybody like, oh shit, the hack is real. You know, like, yeah, yeah. All the EA completely Apex would be unplayable for days because everyone's freaked out that they're gonna get RC. That'd be. I mean, if you were going for the attention, that would be the greatest way to do attention. Yeah, and like if you're going for full attention, there's even other ways too. Like there's there's things that he could do if if it is full RC onto the client. There's other things you could download onto there to maybe just make it so that it says things in chat, right? He's already doing that there. Apex hacking global series by destroy two thousand nine and random, right? This this statement right here, that's there, he could just have every client in the entire game spamming that, every client, if he has that kind of access. But he did it to two streamers. That's why it doesn't make any sense, because if you're going to have a vulnerability like that, it's not about threading the needle to hit, hit in each individual account. It's about you can make it distributable at that point. You can hit a large number of players all at once. If he has the access he claims he does, it doesn't make sense to do it this way, which is it just leads me back to the individually compromised computers, which, again, he may have that access and he just hasn't scoped it up. Right. That is possible. But to me, it feels unlikely at the current stage. Right. I think uh, uh, one of the, the other guy's teammates got banned too. Uh, a guy called Verholz here. Yeah, he said it in the clip. Verholz doesn't seem like a guy that clicks shit. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, I don't know. He got banned for what though? Just fucking like it thinks he's cheating. That, yeah, yeah, like easy anti cheat or whatever. So easy anti cheat thought that he was cheating. Interesting. That's yeah, really he, interesting. The thing is, a, the thing is, he a, can turn on. Do you have a post for that? Yeah. Uh. Let me see if Verholz was streaming. Oh, sure, sure. shit. Let's see if Verholz was streaming yesterday. Uh, he said he got banned mid-clip. I don't know if it's just because uh, Hal got banned or whatnot. Yeah. Um, wait, let me see. Sure. Yeah, because any anytime we do investigation stuff, for me, wait, it's what? like, it's going to be the minimum until we can prove more, right? And I find that the internet generally takes the opposite approach. They're like, the sky is falling. Everything's on fire. And I'm like, no, dude, just wait. Yeah. It's just a bunch just of wait, Hitlers and know. RCEs out there. That's yeah, exactly. That's, today, that's you know? all it is. It's ridiculous. <laughs> because if it, if it truly is EAC, that I mean, this person listed out a list of games that have EAC in it, it's enormous. Yeah, I mean, it would be like every last it. person's machine. Yeah. The reason why I doubt it is, look, let's look at the scope again. He's only hitting Apex Legends players, yeah. right? It's it's unlikely that it's easy anti-cheat. If you had access to f every game that has easy anti-cheat on it, the, the, everything would be on fire right now. <laughs> like that's not I, I find that to be incredibly doubtful by the way is it Mandy or is it Mand you just call me Mandy it's fine nice Mandy yeah, I said, dude, I said, yeah dude that's crazy <laughs> dude that is wild yeah, I'm gonna hear that the rest face. of my life dude he has, he has dick in my <laughs> so face. again dude They're brother serious. dude they say these nuts all the time in my chat dude Keep all day long why do I got banned that's uh that's the clip of him playing ranked and then he gets banned and then just, just keep man, if you can hear he says I got banned too yeah, let's listen to this real fast. 
Yeah, banned. Sure. He I banned. Too, Why do I got I banned? I got no, I think I got banned too, bro. Again, server level access. It, it doesn't yeah. even have to be onto the person's client, right? So, like, think about it this way. If the server is compromised, if this guy has access as an employee would, all of these actions could be done through server level access. Like, you could ban players, you could unban players, you could generate packs, you could trade them to other people, yeah. you could do any of these things because it's all held on the server side. So, like, this also doesn't prove that he has remote code execution on that end person's machine. It's, it's easy for us to assume that he has downloaded something out of that person's computer, run a cheat on that person's computer, and then that person got banned by the automatic easy anti-cheat system. But if he has server level access, he could just be like, oh, you're flagged as a cheater. Done. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that he uh he can turn it up and down. He can he can make the AC entity cheat ban you and he can't. Yeah. So that he can make it not ban you. So when they're just cheating normally, he, yep. he, it won't get detected, but he just turn it on so they get detected instantly if they want to. So that's the thing. The most that I'm getting out of this is I've got I've got two more most likely possibilities, right? Most likely possibility this dude has server level server level access. Yeah. Right? One hundred percent. Now the secondary possibility of that is he doesn't have direct server level access. There may be a compromised employee's machine in there. Like that is that is also very likely, right? Because if you have a compromised employee machine, you would get the same level of access as if you had a vulnerability directly on the server, because you just ping pong. Is that true? It. Yeah, because all the time. Uh, but, a lot of employees' machines are usually aren't given full access at all points. So you get the right have one. Reduced or scoped one. Yeah, I you guess get you, someone in IT that already has access. Old... Yep. Fair, fair. Yeah, like, they just fired fishing. a bunch of people though, like the other day. Yep, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, it could, it could also Ooh. be an employee that's mad. There's, there's no, always that. He's angle. been there for a long time, though. That's the problem. He's been there for like what, two months? Two months? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, so it's, it's like, probably not yeah. a fired employee. But to be real with you, it could be a, a compromised employee machine. Spear phishing is pretty normal. Uh, what that is, if you've never heard of spear phishing, is I will go after one specific employee because they are high value. A high value employee would be somebody in this case who has access to the servers. Could go through that route. Could right? Could doesn't mean true. Means could. Uh, at that point, he could also have a vulnerability directly in the server. He could have remote code execution on the server. Showing the breadth of the things that he has access to, it is likely he is manipulating the servers in some way, either directly or through an employee's machine, right? It is unlikely that he has individual access to each player's client, though. That so is I'm gonna very throw it unlikely out there. Right That's what I think he has, though. I, could be. I highly doubt that it's, it's an employee machine because I assume that right now, they they're scouring they're trying to figure things out and they've seen this now for a little bit which mm -hmm. if you're going through a singular employee machine you think spawning in 30 people finding a packet like this finding that kind mm -hmm. of access would be kind of at least audit again i'm making the assumption yeah. that audit trails exist that they'd be like oh this is a very unusual set of activity coming from you know charlene let's go talk to charlene so working in the industry, we had a couple of different types of attacks and um, they would happen all the time, right? So nation state level attacks, they hit American businesses all the time. Other countries get hit all the time as well, right? And what you would get a lot of the times is you get a bunch of people that are suddenly in the network and leaving logs and just like be making a mess of the place. It's very obvious. All the alarms are going off exactly as you're stating, right? And yeah. then they would all disappear instantly. It would ghost 100%. You wouldn't see anything there. It was like no one was ever there in the first place. And the reason that it was happening is because their liege walked in and said, let me show you how this is actually done. Clean up after yourselves. They're still in the network. You just can't see them. So when we're saying like, oh, it's easy to catch them once they're in the network. No, it's not. 100% not. If they know what they're doing, absolutely not. And it also doesn't mean that it's just one machine. Once you get access, once you get a foothold in the network, lateral movement, you find any other vulnerabilities to get other things in the network, you could be reaching out to a whole bunch of different places, all kinds of different stuff. So we don't really know. There's fog of war there. We don't know what's happening inside of there. We don't know how he's accessing these things. Still could be an employee's account. That's why I'm thinking about it. It's like okay. once you're in the network, you're in the network, right? And with this, could be in the network, could have direct access to the server. Either of those things is possible. Well, I will say there is one silver landing. Uh, Mandy, you said you got 4,000 packs from this? That's, yeah. That's pretty, that's pretty sweet. Get, he Congrats. gives a lot of packs to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, I so, mean, uh, like, not a lot of people. He's given to three: me, Jen Burton, and Hal. Hal, Hal, and Jen Burton are the two other people that got hacked in the tournament, and I'm the fucking third guy. Yep. You, you don't know, just to make sure in case there's testing or anything that needs to be done. You know, in case I have four thousand packs tomorrow, you know, I just really appreciate that for testing purposes, of course. Oh, yeah, I got you, King, dude. <laughs> yeah. So for for people who are saying like, oh, he's in your PC and things like that, there's no indication that he is. Right. There's no indication that he's in these players in you know specifically Mandy's PC. There's indication that he has server side access. There's no indication that he has client side access other than those two other players, which could have directly compromised machines. Their specific machines are compromised, not the game. 
So in order to prove that there's client-side RCE, we have to show that the guy's actually accessing those machines through the game, which is, there's no indication of that just yet. If they prove mm -hmm. it, then great. But don't jump to conclusions just because you think it's possible. You have to yeah. prove these things when we're dealing with security. And if you can't prove it, don't repeat it. I think a general good rule of thumb is that if you're worried about something, like when it comes to security, like say you truly believe it could be a remote code thing, well, then uninstall it, wait a day, it's fine. Like your response should be strive for maximum security, but your saying things out loud should not be say the most scary thing out loud, yep. right? Which is what people tend to do on the internet is they do nothing and then they just say the worst possible thing, which is it's just RCE exploit in play Apex or in the, in the anti-cheat. And you're just like, okay, let's slow down for a second. Yeah. I'm pretty I, sure the easy anti-cheat tweeted out uh, not that long ago that yeah. it's nothing to do with them, that it's a uh, respawn thing. Yeah, I actually, I actually posted on Twitter about this too, um, about that statement. Because it, it's easy yeah. for any of these companies to make claims. They have to, right? You, you have to cover your ass as a company every time. So I said, being, I said being confident. So th their claim was, we've investigated the recent reports of a potential RCE issue with easy anti-cheat. At this time, we are confident there is no RCE vulnerability within EAC being exploited. We will continue to work closely with our partners for any follow-up support needed. And I said, being confident is different from fully understanding the recently claimed RCE vulnerability. With EAC's claim here, I am still waiting to see if the vuln lies with Apex or EAC. Better to be correct over being fast. Don't spread needless fear and wait for more information. Because any company is going to say, oh, it's not us. Does it yeah. never been us, right? And then it could come out later, yeah. like, oh, wait, it was you. But it won't come out. The phone won't come out for months, right? So I, I would look at this in the same way that I am now, which is we have proof of a server-side vulnerability of some kind, whether that's access through an employee or access directly is unknown. With that in mind, there is no direct proof that there's access to the clients, not in mass, not in the way that he would have if he has that kind of access. But at least he hasn't shown his hand, right? And that's kind of where it is, man. That's 100% where it is. Okay. Well, this was awesome. Yeah. Thank yeah, you, I, got, I appreciate that. I, I don't know. I just got like a... Uh, this is probably fucking fake as fuck, but I got like a thing with like... Also, just confirming the RC has nothing to do with R5, right? The R5 is like a secondary game to Apex, but like where you can like, customize a bunch of stuff. So people think it's that's where they got it from. Mm -hmm. So you, you download R5... And it's like a it's like a mod for Apex or whatever. Modded variant. Uh, yeah, he, yeah. He just said it. It has nothing to do with R five at all. But like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, are is everybody using R five? All the people who are like, so for the the two players who were compromised, are they using R five? Uh, I think one is. So right there, it lends credence to it's not right because if one of them is and the other one isn't, then like, bleh, you know. Yeah. But the thing is, like, people are like. People are like scared to like play the game or open the game oh, or whatever, right? No, so people are going to be super afraid of this. And I, I think a lot of the reason why is because they don't understand what remote code execution is. They, they don't understand this. So let me let me draw this on, on the good old whiteboard here. Let's yeah. say that the attacker's computer is here. And let's say that your computer is here, right? This is the server. If the attacker has remote code execution on the server, it means that they can execute code on this machine from their machine. It does not mean that they can execute code on your machine, but it means that they can modify memory and execute commands on the server. That means that they could do things like ban you or generate packs or change your lobby or delete your lobby or anything else that goes on with this, depending on the server yeah. infrastructure that's there. Now, remember, the server is a solo thing. There's authentication servers that handle login, may not have access to that. It could be the actual game servers themselves. So just changing game state, but not changing anything outside of that. There may be servers that handle everything with shops and payment processing details because there's a bunch of different standards that have to be applied to payment processing information. Totally different servers, right? So there's lots of different things that go into the server when people talk about servers for games. It's not just one thing, but it's very clear that he has access to purchase and information regarding how many packs your account has, and he has access to the game servers because he can do things like summon in a bunch of bots, right? Those alone does not necessarily mean he has remote code execution on all things because he could be doing a lot more damage. He has execution for two things, summoning bots, banning, actually three things, summoning bots, banning people by flagging their account for easy anti-cheat. And the last one is creating like packs and then giving them to people. So those three vulnerabilities are quite bad, but it doesn't show full control. Full control would be much worse, right? 
Now, just because you have execution on this machine doesn't mean you have execution on the end user's machine. You would have to have another vulnerability. What you would need to do at that point is you have to have remote code execution on the server, and then that would then chain into another vulnerability that's on the client. The client would have to be vulnerable, so you could do that on the end user, which would be your game copy. In yeah. this case, we can't prove this connection. So it's strange to say that that's the truth, right? We have to prove the connection first. That's it. Yeah, I'd be extremely right, sophisticated too. Yeah, I have a question to you guys though. I think a lot of people want me to ask this question too. So yeah. we've been struggling with cheaters and this shit for fucking years. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, two years plus of just like, and it feels like nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. Is it what 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 is like the what is like the play if you guys were the people in like what's yeah, called? So, so in game security yeah. stuff, generally the way that we do this is through bandwaves. Right, and I, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of band waves to the game, right? Are they doing massive band waves of like no. tens of thousands? They haven't done, done anything. They banned the one time. How many people do they ban in the one band wave? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, it was it was a lot. People like jumped a bunch of places and stuff like that, but they only one time. It was like only one, one time, time? In the, for like a whole week, where the game okay. actually felt normal. About 100k uh, people yeah. are saying. Is it 100k? Maybe. Some people are saying 4k remember. and 7k. So no I, one I knows that. All right. No so idea. generally, the way that we do this is you're supposed to do it every three to six months. And it's not about catching the players cheating. And I know that may be weird, right? Why would you ban players if you're not trying to stop the players from cheating? You're not. It, they're actually ammunition. So what we usually do, we do it every three to six months because you, there's a person on the other side that's making the botting or cheating tools. They're creating those tools, and they're usually monetizing that in some way, right? If they're not monetizing yeah. it, whatever. But when you do this three to six month ban, if they are monetizing it, you get a shitload of chargebacks if they're not using crypto. All those players are suddenly angry customers for your opponent. At the same time, you also get a bunch of angry players that are reviewing that bot and telling everyone, don't use this tool. I got banned for this tool. So you do this all at once to overwhelm the shit out of your opponent. All at once. That's why we do every three to six months. And it also stops your opponent, who are the bot creators, from detecting how you caught them. Because they don't know. Yeah. It could be any change they made over the last three to six months. You do it then, at that moment. To basically just wipe them off the map. And we used to do that all the time at Blizzard. Like, while I was at Blizzard, we banned, um, for me, I banned over 2 million accounts in detections that I formed, right? But there were people on risk that banned like 14, 15 million accounts doing this. And each time one of those ban waves went through, it shipped away at every one of those cheat creators until many of them fell under the pressure because they couldn't handle it. And that helps make the game better. It's not about the okay. players getting banned. It's about using them as ammo every time. Okay. Because right now it feels like Right now, it feels like, dude, every time anyone gets banned, it feels like a manual ban. Yep. Like, like yeah. we have to, when we die to someone, we say, okay, uh, seven, eight, nine, five, 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 eight, eight in my game. He's yep. cheating. Can you ban him? They go and look, boom, aimbotting, ban. It feels like a manual ban every time. And it doesn't I'm sure feel that like. Happens. Apex yeah, is free like, to play, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's live service. So the moment, here's the other thing. Generally, games that have pay, like costs associated to buying the game, it is, this is much less common. And the reason why is because there's a barrier to entry. Yeah, there's course. there's way less hacks like this. And I, I know that sucks because free-to-play games are awesome as hell, but the barrier to entry for the attacker is like, whatever, just go make a new one. Who gives a shit, right? There's nothing to tie to them yeah, to it. Yeah. They just go generate a new email, go make a new game. Who gives a shit? Doesn't matter. I can make a million Steam accounts a day. Whatever, right? And that's that's how that shit happens. And it's sad. You know, it's it's sad, but that is, that is the state of free-to-play games. You're always going to have that. So what you need to do at that point is just attack the cheat creators. And, like, if they're not doing regular band waves, if they're not doing that every three to six months, there are two reasons why. Either they don't have the manpower for it, or they don't have the detection method for it. It's, it's sophistication or organization issues. Always. And, like, sophistication is going to come down to, like, hey, we don't have a method for catching these people. We don't have a good way to detect this other than player-driven reporting, right? That sucks. That's a shit place to be. That's the same place we were for StarCraft 2. Most of the people who get banned in StarCraft 2, they get banned at the end of the season because they get reported and a, a actual risk employee has to go and watch the game to see if that person reacted to something in Fog of War. It sucks. It's a shit way to be, but that is sometimes the only solution, right? Outside of that, you need heuristic detection, and that's very hard to develop for. So, like, it, it's not always possible. The other one is going to be organization, which maybe, maybe they just don't have the people for it. They don't got the manpower, man. And, like, they haven't put enough people into that team, it may be tough to do. Because, to be real you with you... Fire a ton of them. Yeah. Yeah, Se security, yeah, firing a ton of them, not great. But also, security people are expensive as shit, dude. That what we do yep. is not cheap. And I can understand that as well. So, like, on the dev side, I'm 
I'm wondering if they just can't solve this issue right now and they might be able to solve it later, or maybe they just can't solve it because they're overwhelmed by it, man. And that's that's so it, awful. It's been a part of EA yeah. for so long, or at least Apex. I mean, I gosh, five years ago, I was getting clapped by the flat line because of cheating. Like that yeah. thing, it just... It, it, it's been a continuous plague within Apex for years. I don't think it's... And it's gotten I, even worse. had kernel-level anti-cheat for years, so I don't yeah. think the problem is solved whatsoever. Yeah, and it's, it's something to tell you guys, too. I, I am very much against kernel level anti cheat i hate kernel level anti cheat i don't like that it gives so much access to your machine it's why i run a secondary machine to be able to go and play uh hell divers 2 i actually run it on a second machine and then pipe the video through my stream so i'm not running kernel level anti cheat on my main machine and that's crazy this, dude yeah, what? This, this actually shows you that kernel level anti cheat doesn't fix the problem it won't yeah. there's always going to be cheaters apex in these games they're always going to be running example. yep apex is a classic example of you don't need kernel level anti cheat it's not going to work anyway and now you have access to all of those people's machines at the hardware and software level that you should not have access to. It's it's not And if necessary. there's a compromise with them, the compromise would be one of the worst ones in history, right? You got yep. like worm level compromisation right there. It'd yeah. be crazy. Because so it, it's it, like, why have that? Yeah, if kernel level anti-cheat gets compromised in any way, if any of these implementations of it, you have full access to every machine that it's compromised on. That's insane shit. And that, that scares the hell out of me, frankly. That's why I don't like it. I'm never going to like it. <laughs> well, like, well, like, why is Valorant so much better than everyone else's then? I, that's what I don't understand. So for theirs, they, they likely have a better team set up to do this, right? Which means they have better yeah. reporting, they have better logging, they have better systems in place to ban these people, and they have a better regular cadence for bans, right? It's, it could be better culture, too. Better could be culture, better culture like, every, yeah. every person does better logging, has better yeah. audit trails, has, like, every engineer is purchased into this idea of security as a first-class citizen yep. versus security because we got a bunch of players angry, which just makes different software. Yep, and if you and if you think about it, this too, like I worked at Blizzard, we didn't use kernel level anti cheat. We still banned millions of accounts. People always make the claim like, "Oh, wow, it's full of bots." Yeah, it is. And we ban all of them, dude. We ban shitloads of bots. We won't catch everybody every time, but you can't with kernel level anti cheat either. And our solution didn't give us full access to your machine because no one should have full level access to your machine except for you, frankly. Agreed. Yeah, but it's just like. Like, what the fuck do you do? Do you just tank it the rest of our lives or what? Yeah, on the player well, side, yeah. on the player side, the most uh -huh. that you can do is raise awareness for this, is talk about it on social media. See, these are the things that I am seeing as a player without making wild claims, because people are going to make wild claims about this. Just remember something, and this is this is the most important thing. And I know it, it doesn't feel like this all the time. You're on the same side as the devs. And it feels like the devs are lazy. It feels like the devs don't care. But I guarantee you, there's a bunch of developers trying to solve this, and they can't right now. They don't have okay. a method to do it, or they don't have the people to do it. And I know that sucks, and it doesn't feel that way. But it's, it's so easy to fall into the trap where you are adversaries with the devs when they're already fighting these guys. Work with them as much as you okay. can. Report as many of these pieces of shit as possible. Put that out on social media. Show that any time you possibly can. And it's... It's such a common thing, and it's it, it's funny because I, I normally stream in software and game development here on Twitch, right? That's normally the place that I stream, and it's yeah. it's such a common thing to have this idea that devs are golden gods that are untouchable, yep. amazing human beings, or they're pieces of shit that don't care. They're other humans, and they're working a job, and they're trying to get this stuff solved, and their own player base turning against them, dude. That feels that makes it all worse, dude. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, and there's also well, there's one more thing you yeah. can do as well, which is that. I mean, at the end of the day, if a company just doesn't care about it, you have to vote with your eyes and vote with your dollars. Yep. Right? Like at some point, you also have to combat it in that kind of sense. And so like you cannot support a place and say they're awful and then also keep on going back to them because it's like you're just in a toxic relationship at that point. And there's no point. They're like, oh, we could take away cheating. But hey, sales are still sales. Everything hasn't changed. We just had the biggest exploit, apparently, and nobody's changed. So yeah. whatever. Right. Like they're, it's not going to be serious until they feel it. Yeah, there's always going to well, be like, there's always going to yeah, be a limit for you as a player too, you know. Yeah, always a limit. Yep, yeah. it's like, but at the end of the day, it's like also a job, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, a lot, it, a lot of like, jobs it's are a job for us, these. right? Like if I yeah. if I play something else but Apex, it's just it's I'm yeah. choked. Like you know, like yep. I, I probably I don't know I don't know if I can I can survive doing something else than playing Apex, and it's so hard to just say you know fuck it, I don't yeah. want to do it anymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's scary as hell. And like uh, as a primary Apex Apex player, right? Especially streaming this. If you're locked into that one game and that game starts to fail, immediately you're going to feel betrayed by the devs, right? And I I, I I would assume that. Yeah, you feel betrayed by the devs. Yeah, and like no, I yeah. totally get that. I 100% get that. Absolutely. And you don't you're not wrong for feeling that way at all. 
uh, the only thing that I can I can impress on you about that is I, I guarantee there are people in there trying to fix the problem. And the only thing that you can take away from that is if a person is under those types of situations, the whole room is on fire around them. They care about the game just as much because yeah. they go to work every day in a scenario like that where the room is on fire, the player base is enraged, the game's getting hacked to shit. There's two ways that they can go. The player base stays turned against them and they feel like shit and they burn out and then you have less chance of fixing this problem or the player base rallies around them and tries everything they can to beat the beat back the cheaters who are in the game and maybe the devs feel inspired enough where they feel good and they start f moving forward with the community and it's it's yeah. more often than not the player base turns against them everybody loses you know and yeah. there is a limit to that there's a limit to that where you're like you know what this is insane that we're just not able to fix this. It's it's just a lost cause. And we felt that way with Titanfall 2 for ages. You remember that? Like, Titanfall 2 was just a mess for ages, you know? So, like, this is kind of a tale as old as time. We've seen the same exact thing with other games in the past. This is not abnormal. I guess, I guess the only advice I have for you is if you get to a point where you, like, feel like the game is doing more damage to you than good, transitioning to other games is the only thing you can really do at that point. And that sucks. That's not yeah. a good place to be, especially as a yeah, streamer like, or a pro player. None of that is good, but it's it's the reality of it. Yeah, but it's, By the way, it's, uh, uh, it's like a lot of people have... Oh, yeah, shoot. My bad. No, no, go oh, for no, it. Oh, no, no. You you go. You finish the thought. Well, and I'll, then I'll I'll, 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 I was just saying, it's just like... The problem with... The problem I have is the communication is so bad that it yep. feels like they don't care. Does that make sense? Like, if they tweet it out every now and then, like, yo, guys, we know there's a problem... We're really fixing, like, we're trying our best. Keep reporting, you know, you guys got that shit. You know, like, stuff like that, it'll be fine. I agree. But it's dead silent for, like, three months. And yes. then you get a, oh, look at this new recolor, $25. And this new super epic heirloom, 700 bucks. Yep. Wow, yeah, like, dude, I can't wait for next so, season. Like, it feels like fucking dog shit, right? I like, know. I know. Community so, manager would be good at I, this I, point. <laughs> yeah, community manager talking to the player base would be a great idea. And I, I do think they're absolutely failing that. One thing you have to remember... While a company looks like a unified thing on the outside, right? We have a full company and it's the company that makes Apex, right? The big company. There's marketing teams. There's people that are handling uh, processing for payments. There's people that are handling the storefront. There's people that are handling all of these different each systems, right? The game may be on fire, but that doesn't mean the other teams stop moving. So they had a product line that was planned to come out at these times. They're not releasing it even though the game's on fire. They're releasing it because it's their timeline to release it, whether the yeah, game is yeah. on fire or not. So it may look really shit on the outside, but that team's not going to stop functioning just because the game's on fire. They're just going to keep doing what they're supposed That's their job, right? So I think the biggest thing here is to understand that the security team and the game management teams are probably having a huge problem. Like, that's they're the ones that are absolutely on fire. These other teams are just going to keep doing exactly what they're doing, right? That they're paid to do. They're going to go release the products on the timeline. They're going to do all the marketing shit they're normally going to do. They're going to run tournaments. Yeah. They're going to do all the shit that they have to, right? But those security teams and the game management team stuff, they're on fire. And with those, I I absolutely agree. They need more community, like community reporting stuff. They need they need more communication with you guys. Because that's the worst thing you can do is be like, oh, the game's on fire. Let me shut up and sit in the corner. Like, no. Because in today's age on the internet, and in general, if there's a bunch of wild-ass claims happening like this, if you sit silently in the back, the room is going to fill up with people who are making wild claims. And no one yeah. is going to have any other voice to listen to, so they're just going to believe the wild claims. As a company, you guys got to come out and say, this is what we're doing, we know this is a problem, we agree with you, let's fight them together. Change that shit change the narrative back around to be a collaborative one with the players who hate this because you hate it too as the, as the team that's working on the game. And you know you hate it. You have people working on this shit. Work with the players. Tell them you're working with them. Be public about it. You could turn this around into a win instantly by doing that. Even yep. if it takes a long time to fix. Even if it's really shit to fix. Even if you don't have a plan yet to go forward. Talking to your player base is always the right choice. Always. They apparently fired their community lead I just got told. So that's that. Shit. that's unfortunate, of course. Oh, hopefully God. they're firing it to get a new one such that they're able to have a better community lead situation. Because I mean, obviously comms are super, super important. And how often have you thought something like this happens just in regular life where you know somebody, you think they're being a dick, and then it just turns out you just didn't communicate with them. It's like this yep. is just a massive scale version of that. Simple communication, yeah. a audit trail of what they've done, how many accounts they've banned in the last month. Yeah. Very, very simple things just to give people a sense of like, oh, they're that actually they care. Yep. Yeah. If it, the, thing is, it feels, 
the thing is, it, feel, it feels like now the job is no, no, not the job. Apex feels like it's a it's a money machine to fund other projects, and a, a lot of the money is not put it, put back into uh, Apex, right? That's what it feels like from my point of view. I obviously don't know that because I don't work there, and it's just like it feels like we're just getting we're just getting rolled and. No one really cares because there's no communication. There's no like, oh, we banned these this many accounts. There's, we did this, or like, oh, this this is coming, or guys, you should hop off the game right now. Or there's no like server resets. There's nothing at yeah. all. We haven't had a single server reset for five years. Yeah, and like, it's they, they like it's crazy. Yeah, that that feeling is super valid. The the fact that you feel that way yeah. and you know that it, it's not provable, but it feels that way as a player, totally makes sense. I would feel the same way, man. I would absolutely feel the same way. The reason why the company needs to put out communication, the reason why you do that, isn't to convince people that have already written them off. It's to convince people like you that they care. It's to show the people that are on the fence that like, hey man, I just need you to talk. You're not going to convince all of the players that what you're doing is correct. You're not yeah. going to convince all the players you're doing a good job. But the ones that are on the fence that are like, dude, just say something. Just say yeah. anything. You know, like, yeah. you're actually showing them that you give a shit enough to go forward, right? And yeah, for the pro player community, they need that. For the people who watch the pro players, they need that. Talk to your players. Always talk to your players. It's, it's, it's all about communication. Even if you're not able to fix the problem right away, identifying that the problem exists, admitting that the problem exists is a big deal. The only thing that could stop them from doing that is legal constraints. If they yep. have some kind of a legal constraint in place where they are open to legal liability by talking about this publicly due to ongoing investigation or some kind of other legal issue, then yeah. They couldn't talk about it. That'd be the only and there reason. There could be other can. reasons too. Yeah, there, there could, could be, be a, fiduciary responsibilities where, like, if you be. talk about the fact that your game's compromised, you could tank the stock price, and thus you're supposed to pretend like yep. everything's good, despite yeah. that being terrible. That could just be the, be the reality, reality they're living under. Which yeah, is sad. At the end of the day, it's yeah. EA, dude. Like, they, they, there's been massive cheater problems, and there was one like a long time ago. The only tweet we got from EA or Respawn was, oh, we did amazing in Q1 because we sold a bunch of uh, uh, heirlooms and everybody loved the heirlooms. Yeah, that's your, like, what? Like, that's your business dude, side. I'm, yeah. Dude, everyone is literally like, I'm I'm sitting here and getting fucking absolutely molly by cheaters and aimbotters and shit yep. all day long. And then you have all the like nine to five dads that come home and sit on the couch playing on the PC, PS, right? Yep. Buying all their stuff. And the thing is, I would, I would. There's nothing I would love to more than do, than to convince everyone to stop spending money on the game. Because if people keep spending money on the game, then they think everything is fine. But if people stop spending money on the game, they'll realize that what they're doing is actually not that good, right? Sure. You, you, you can, probably you, just nailed it on the head right yeah. there with that one because I'm not going to probably experience much for cheaters because cheaters yeah. aren't probably going to be in my over four league right they're just not going to be there so oh. it's not really the problem that i'm experiencing which means i'm going to be buying the stuff i'm going to be enjoying the game and it's really you guys that get the shaft on yeah. this yeah you got to think about like where's your limit right because the limit is going to be hey we really want the devs to reach out we really want a community manager to be in place we really want to hear communication from that at a certain point you're like this is stupid i'm not getting what i need out of this relationship with these developers and I need to walk away or I need to tell them, hey, we're not going to be buying anything. We're just going to play your game for free because that's the whole that's the whole reality of it. Right. Because, yeah, at a certain point, you have to you have to kind of, you know, pull the leash and be like, stop it. Because to be real with you, games exist because players play them as a dev. I only exist because people buy my game as a streamer. Yeah. I only exist because the community watches this stream. They vote with their subs and bits. They vote with their eyes. Right. And yeah, there is a there is a limit to all of this where you just feel so negatively as a player where you get up every day and you're like, God, I'm going to have to go fight a shitload of cheaters again. And we're getting no communication about this. And that's, yeah, there's a limit to that. And you have to decide what that limit is for you. Every player would. Yeah, but I, I reached my limit a long time ago. I'm not no, you lie. didn't because you're still but, playing. <laughs> yeah, but that's because that's because it pays the bills, brother. You yeah, know? yeah. yeah. That's yeah. how it is. I ain't got, I ain't got motion like that. I, I don't have millions in the bank, you know. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just trying to fucking, I'm just trying to save up a, a bunch of money. Yep. No, it makes sense. You know? Saving up a bunch of money. I mean, the, transitioning your content is kind of the only way you can really do that, and that's tough as shit. I know how tough that is, especially when you're known as like the apex player or whatever it is that you're doing. Like transitioning yeah. content to anything else is very, very hard. And yeah, 
I guess the only way you could do it is like maybe one stream a week you do something else, and I, I that sucks. Like it's a shit feel, but that's all you can really do. Transition to being like FPS guy, you know, like that's there's there's nothing you can really do outside of that. If the game lets you down, the game lets yeah. you down. Because like we we've seen the same kind of a thing with major players. Like if if you're a Fortnite only streamer, right? If you're an Apex yeah. only streamer, if you're a Tarkov only streamer, if that game fails, you've you've tied your whole brand to only that game. You know, and it doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't work in the long run yeah, because these games will eventually die, you know. Yeah, I agree. But the thing is it's the what is annoying I played Overwatch before. You guys know the Overwatch story. Overwatch is complete utterly bad now. I know. Yeah. It's um, sad. And the thing is like <laughs> it's playing. just it's just jumping from games that where it feels like you just have the game right here. You have yeah. the perfect game, but it feels like it's mismanaged and not well like you have like let's just say you have a beautiful Ferrari down the fucking uh on the street, right? But like you, you kick it every time you see it, or you slam the doors or whatever, right? And then it breaks, and you're like, "Oh no, what happened, dude?" You know, that's what it feels like. I agree. You have like a perfect yeah. profit product here, but it feels like it's not well taken care of, and it sucks from a, a player point of view. That I'm sitting here, I'm like, I can't do anything. Like, I, I, this game is this game is almost perfect. It has like all the things that I don't know. It has like all the good things and all the qualities that people ask, but yeah. It, in reality, it just feels like it's not like nobody cares it's, about it. You know, it, it sounds like you're grieving for a game that you know is dead, and I understand that feeling, like 100. Like a I, lot of pe- yeah. a lot of people felt that way when Overwatch 2 kind of shit the bed, and I felt that way because I I was there when we were working on Overwatch One, right? And I I did a bunch of security stuff for Overwatch One before we launched, and it's an awesome game. And I hate where Overwatch Two is today, so I get it. I it's super get so it. So bad. It sucks. Yeah. It's awful. They, it's like they ripped the soul out of it and they didn't understand why it worked in the first place. Like it's, it's a very common thing. Something we always have to remember about this stuff is games are made by people. And when those people leave, the name is still there. The game is still there. But it doesn't mean it's the same game because those yeah. people aren't there anymore. The people that made it great in the first place don't exist at the company anymore. And they made it good in the first place, right? The best example I have for this is like Hearthstone when it launched. Amazing game. Awesome as shit. Cool card Agreed. game, right? Ben Brode was the uh, game director for that game. He was, he was the lead game designer, game director for, for Hearthstone. He actually left Blizzard. Hearthstone's kind of fallen into disrepair. People don't like it as much anymore, right? He moved off and made his own company called Second Dinner. Second Dinner's first game is Marvel Snap. Ben Brode moved off and made his own card game. And Marvel Snap is fun as shit. I love it. I think it's super fun. A lot of people really enjoy it as well. So people like that, that are really good at making these types of games, when they leave... That game doesn't have that vision anymore. Yeah. That happens. When you do mass layoffs like this, the same thing can happen. And it sucks. Yeah. It sucks so bad because you're like, it's the same game. It's still the same game. The company name is the same company. They didn't even change ownership, but they did change ownership because those culture. same people aren't working there anymore. I see, I see what you're saying, yeah. Yeah. It sucks. It's so shit feeling. Yeah, but yeah, I, I know what you... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like, it's just ass that you're... Yeah. That you're just standing here just watching from like the sideline, you can't do anything, right? Yeah. No, it's it sucks. And like even even for me, like when we were going to banning people, you know, there were tons of things where it's like, God damn it, I can't find a way to detect this. I can't find a way to catch this this person, right? I remember doing a Hail Mary thing one time because I was like, I want to get rid of fishing bots in World of Warcraft, because so many goddamn fishing bots. The moment the expansion would come out, yeah. it's like fishing bots everywhere, right? And I formed this whole detection. I was like finding all the different methods to do it and I put it out and I was like, I'm gonna catch so many fishing bots here to do this. It banned three people. <laughs> it's, it's like a full thing with like an MO with millions of players and like three dudes got detected. I was like, God damn it. You know, like I, I spent like two months on it, dude. So Fishing like, yeah, this, the same thing happens on the other end. Like some of the shit just fails and you're like, God, I didn't even, I didn't even, I spent all that time and all that money to like do this thing and it didn't even work. So like it, it does happen and it happens on the same side. I think, I think the best thing to remember in all of this is the devs who care, they're on your side, man. They are as the players. And it's, it sucks because there may be things where they can't communicate to you because of legal shit or financial shit. There may be things where they, they can't form a detection for the thing right now. They're doing investigation. They don't want to give away anything. They don't want to tip their hand to the person who's attacking. Like there's, there's so many reasons not to, but I, I honestly believe that if companies were more open with communication to the players, there would be less bad feelings when things like this happen. Cause this is going to keep happening. Agreed. Attacks are going to yeah. keep happening on companies. Attacks are going to keep happening on games. And if the companies can communicate with the players and not have, yeah, exactly, radio silence is bad. If, if there's no radio silence, if you actually can talk to people and say, hey, we are aware of this. We're working on it. I'm sorry. That's a great way to be. It's, it's the 
honestly, I feel like it's the only way to be right now because otherwise toxicity is just going to run rampant because you have players that believe in the developers, that believe in the game, that know that it could be something better. And then you have people that are like, this game's shit, right? And the ones who are just like, this game's shit and that's all that they care about, they're going to win if you don't say anything. You have to I'm, prove I'm, I'm, to the players that you're yeah. doing something. You have to. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm a mix of between both of them. I'm not going to lie. 100%. So I don't want to sit here and act like I'm a, I'm a saint or something, right? Oh, no, you're, yeah. you're, you're tilted, and I get it. Like, I would be tilted, dude. You've, you've got every... You have a whole career invested in this game. You have a stream invested in the game. You're a pro player for this game. Of course you're tilted. Like, why wouldn't you be? That's crazy that you wouldn't be, right? This directly affects you both financially. It makes you nervous all of the time because now you're like, what? where's my career going? Like, what am I going to do? What if the game dies? What if everyone stops playing the game? Like, of course you'd be upset. Like, there's... Yeah. That's not wrong. That's not wrong at all. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And like, dude, that's got to be exhausting as shit. So I get it. I super get it. I mean, the reality is that you should always be upset about something you love in some yeah. sense, because it's never in a perfect condition. There is no such thing as a perfect condition item. Oh, and so you should on. always be motivated for something to be better. Now, there's obviously like bad reactions versus good reactions towards it. And that kind of shows, you know, the state of where you're at. And if your reaction is always purely bad, then obviously it's gone on long enough that it's no longer about just simply you and the love of it. It's now turning into yep. the other side, which is a, a little bit more difficult. Yep. And it's the same reason why, like, I try to diversify my content over the internet, right? Like, I put stuff on YouTube. I'm actually streaming on Twitch and YouTube at the same time right now. Like, what if Twitch died today? If Twitch died today. Yeah. That would be horrifying. I'm scared of that, right? I'm always scared of that yeah. happening. Like, no one likes Twitch anymore. Oh, shit. Right? But we stream on YouTube as well. And there will be other platforms in the future. And maybe one day Twitch will die. The only thing you can yeah. do is adapt, and you have to keep your sanity during the process of doing that. That's all you can do. It's, you can't control the company, but you can definitely control yourself, and you've got a community of people that care about you around you, obviously, because you've got a big community of people that are watching you on your stream. So yeah. that's that's all you can rely on. They carry us, man. That's what the community I, does. I, I hate to tell you, but 11,000 people don't watch you just purely for your gameplay. People ah, like you. You know true. what I mean? I don't, I don't, people I don't like have you. So that's that's not how this works. It's more like the thing happened yesterday, so people are curious, right? And then sure. it's a nice... I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. It's a really nice conversation to have because I haven't been venting or anything like that. Oh, yeah. It's just like like to anyone, it, the only thing I've been... I've just been annoyed every single day, and it's kind of nice to hear it from the other side of like you guys that actually make the, the games. And Because I don't think like that. You know, I don't sit here and think, oh, what is the developer doing right now? All I see is no communication. The game's fucking dog shit. And every yep. time they make a new update, it feels like they just randomly threw a dice and just put that in this game. They're like, oh, fuck it, just made this character mega OP. And you're like, yeah. what? Yeah. Yep, because the right. game balance team is like, well, we're going to keep balancing the game. And and the marketing team's yeah. like, we're going to keep marketing the game. And the microtransaction team's yeah. like, we're keeping to make microtransactions. And the security team is like, my hair is on fire. Please help me. Like, and the yeah. monitoring <laughs> team's like, we'll get you last month's balance. Don't worry. We'll get it to you. You just keep balancing it. We'll tell you what happened six months ago soon. Oh, it's yeah. so rough, dude. It's so rough. It By just, the way, yeah, I do got one tweet that I think is pretty interesting to read uh, from RSPN Hideouts. Uh, apparently, Connor Ford, he's the Apex Security of Respawn. So this yeah, is just... Is fresh off the presses he said i see comments and posts saying anti-cheat teams should have been laid off no. you should know our team sees this and it hurts there is yep. no empathy shown for those affected by the layoffs nor the work we do day in and day out there wouldn't be shit to talk if we could show you the numbers show us the numbers i mean it sounds like i mean there it is it sounds pretty straightforward let's see the can numbers that, that would probably I, help a lot of people I, I, I can you link really that in cool. the discord chat yeah i was yeah, really I'll, cool i'll, I'll talk to him uh, we're uh, uh, it's like if we're friends. I would say I've spoken with him on Discord and stuff like that uh, a lot. But um, a lot of people, you know how it is in the gaming community. They wish bad upon people, even though they don't know behind the scenes what's happening. And a lot of the Apex Twitter normies, if you could say it, they just go after everyone there and say yeah. everyone should get fired and you don't deserve a job and stuff like that. Uh, that's of course not super nice to say or anything when you don't know what's happening behind the scenes, right? Yeah, this They've is never held a real job. That's why this, this tweet is super important. So I see comment no. and post saying anti cheat team should have been laid off, like we were talking about, right? But there's a comment right after this is, bro, you do literally nothing but make EDM music and tweet how you're getting to the root of the issue on cheaters. You you have yet to really nail down on a solid solution on the cheater situation. If you aren't doing the job you're paid to do, then why are you still here? 
That's exactly what I was talking about. Being adversarial with the devs is not going to fix this issue. And he said, response. Imagine a human acting yeah. like a human and doing things outside of work. I know this yeah. is a crazy thought, but it, it could happen, right? As a game developer, I do all kinds of shit outside of this. I run a ferret rescue. I grow lion's mane mushrooms in my backyard. Like I, I go on walks. I go out into the forest in my local Pioneer area because I love the shit out of it. Like I do all kinds of shit. We're human beings. That's the point, right? So like this dude's just yeah. like you are only your job. Do the do the thing, developer. Do the thing. It's like no, dude. Yeah. Just, it's, it doesn't make any sense at that point, right? So he said, maybe because I am doing my job, I'm paid to do, and doing it well enough to retain it. There isn't an end all solution for cheaters, which he's correct about. It's a cat and mouse game. You will find a way to yep. catch them. They'll find a way to get away the next time. Mino, thank you for those gifted subs. Very nice of you. I have I have to uh, open the door real quick. Is that okay? Sure, sure. Yeah. Out one minute. But, he yeah, said yeah. that should be apparent. Armchair devs like yourself have the gall to say. Stuff like this without knowing the full picture. He is 100% correct in that take. Yep. The meeting is not right now. Well, if it's in eight minutes, I'm good. Calm. Calm. 10.30. But yeah, no, that's... that's He's 100% correct. He's 100% correct. So, like, devs are not the cause of this. It's not that devs don't care even if you're not seeing action take place. They have a job. They have a job. I know that tweet is four days old. They've been having this issue for two months so yes, but longer. I mean, not yes. just. I mean, they've been having this issue for years at this point when it comes to cheating. Like there, yep. he is under no delusion that this is an extremely difficult thing, and it's been a long stem. It's just become very popular yep. recently. I'm gonna, I'm gonna the, quote I mean, to this. Yeah, I mean, the biggest issue that I have is that whenever I hear people talk like this or act like this, it's largely because they've never had a very public facing job. You know, yep. I work at Netflix. Guess what? You know how many times something goes wrong? I get tagged 9,000 times in a post every single time. Yeah, it's because of that. Netflix mentioned, I know Netflix mentioned, by the way, but it's like real talk. Like that's, it's, it, whenever you work on a public facing thing, when something goes wrong, you're, you are the idiot that made the thing go wrong. And it's just like, okay, hold on. It might just be more confusing yeah and it never makes sense to attack developers in the face of cheating in games devs are on the side of the players they don't want this happening as much as you don't they also can't communicate everything they are doing yeah I mean, the, the amount of, like, NDAs and things that they have on this stuff is just so wild. People have no idea how hard it is. Generally, when it comes to any company like this, uh, you can ask, you can never ask a question that involves a number. It's like a yep. good rule of thumb. If you say, have you banned a lot of people? They'll say, yeah. Say, how many people? They will just, I, sorry, I cannot say anything about a that. Lot that, is a, yeah. that is a number. I cannot say number. And I said, there are legal hurdles, financial implications, and they would be tipping their hands to the attackers. Fog of war goes both ways. Yeah. I'm back. Welcome. Thor, did you say oh. you have to take off here shortly? Yeah. Six minutes. We should probably wrap this up then. Yeah. Mandy, thanks for joining us. It's kind of yeah. out of the blue. Sorry that you got attacked yeah. in chat so, to come join yeah. a random, no, 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 a random I, I said Discord it. call. I, was, I know I was watching you uh, before. I was just sitting in queue. And I, I just said, I just told Chad, like, someone asked me if I, if I, like, I just said that it sounded like you guys weren't 100% sure of what you guys yep. were looking at because you guys were talking about ranked, but it was like in a pro match that it happened and stuff. So it was just like, if I wanted to, uh, I just wanted to help if you guys yeah. needed it, of course. Yeah. So this is actually Apex uh, security. So I'm, I'm actually putting out a tweet so you can see this too, Mandy. Is Apex security at Respawn, speak softly and carry a big band hammer. I make music sometimes. My views are my own, right? It's personal account. And I, my response to the statement is, it never makes sense to attack developers in the face of cheating in games. Devs are on the side of the players. They don't want this happening as much as you don't. They also can't communicate everything they are doing at all times. There are legal hurdles, financial implications, and they would be tipping their hands to the attackers. Fog of war goes both ways. The only thing I would suggest is letting players know you care as developers exactly as he is doing here. Because that's what he's doing. It's him saying, absolutely. It is saying yeah. that, you know, he cares. And he's going to get lambasted in the comments for it. People are going to burn him alive. But, like, that is just how that's going to go, right? Yeah. I guess there's a typo in the tweet where... Don't listen to chat. You you just tweet with your heart, Thor. Don't don't listen to them. It says hands. It says hands. It doesn't say hats. You goblins. You guys trying to one-guy me all together? Don't. Devs is not. 
Devs is not. Oh, I swear to God, I'm posting this. You guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> My whole chat just tried to one guy me. God damn it. Uh, so, so, Mandy, where can we find you besides for uh, on Twitch? Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I'm Link not your... that type of guy, dude. No, I'm Link not gonna it. Lie. Link you're on YouTube, no, right? No, you're on YouTube. No. Link it, you're cool. Dude, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Link your shit. I can't. No, I Link your shit. No, put it. I don't do that. Yeah, it's I'm too late. It's too late. Do I'm it. looking at your profile and I'm finding your stream. Done. All right, I found I found his YouTube. I already got his YouTube. Okay. Bro Mandy chat. with an underscore at no. the end. Oh, there's no... Where's the D's at this? I, I don't... You should lean in. You lean go. into D's nuts. <laughs> Dude, that's... The, Mandy's nuts. That's what my community wants to be called sometimes. It's but I, there's no way I'm calling them, them but, that ever. But no, to be real with you, dude, like, you've got a really thriving community around you. You know, and it's it's super apparent that that's happening. Like you, you said, you don't have this many people normally, but if we go to like Twitch Tracker, we pull you up, right? I hope you're getting exposed live. You've got Dude, four thousand. Yeah, but you've you've got four thousand six hundred average viewers. That's not small. You know, like, and you have to remember that's not small. You're in the top two hundred and twenty eight streams on the platform. So understand that even if this right game now. dies, you have a large amount of community that cares about you right now. That's in your chat. They give a shit about you, not just your gameplay. And it's easy to forget that. It's really easy to forget that. Thor literally just caught you in 4K. Got yeah, him. I know. I, I know. I also that's why I do variety stuff as one of the only Apex streamers too. I try and like you should make sure that people like watching not just me doing Apex stuff, right? Yep. And I yeah. have to end my stream in a moment here, and I'm going to be rating you. Get wrecked. Okay. Get wrecked. All right, take care, guys. Because <laughs> I got a meeting to go. All right. All right, right, I'll upload you video later, dude. <laughs> A huge thank you i think from everyone else too thank you guys for letting me join and thank you for um what's called just yeah opening my eyes for other things than just me fucking hating the game every single day anytime dude and if, yeah, if yeah. you want to talk any other time hit me up like i'm always around yeah. i stream 12 hours a day every day except for thursday so <laughs> you're always yeah, gonna I catch see. me on it ten, ten hour thursday indie, dude. thursday of course actually part-timer yeah, I'm full time. I've been full time forever, dude. <laughs> dude I'm just yeah, like a guys a lot. couple hour Andy over here. Twelve hours is nuts. Nah. Yeah, I will see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Yeah. All right. Bye. Hope you guys have an amazing day.